Personal notice. Change is my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Greetings, mystery lover. Time for another Let George Do It adventure. This story concerns a couple of brothers by the name of McIntosh. And I think they were rightly named, because as you will find out, here are a couple of real slickers. Dear Mr. Valentine, I am a butler in a very fancy house. Though perhaps I ain't the usual type for butling. My bosses are two brothers. The brothers McIntosh. I've been with them ever since I was a busboy in the first cafe they ever owned. What a joint that was. But now they're a success so big it hurts your eyes. Bill McIntosh used to be a cook. And it must have given him a sour stomach. Because there's a guy what hates everybody. But I mean everybody. And it's plenty mutual. Bill's brother, the sweetest guy in the world. This Mervyn McIntosh is a prince, a real gentleman. With good words and a wide open pocketbook for everybody. Friends, I tell you, Mr. Valentine, there's nobody who ain't. Except that is, of course, whoever is that wants to kill him. But how can you ever get a man man to admit he's in danger when he's so big-hearted he'd slap the devil himself on the back and say, have a cigar? That's my problem, and I need your help. Yours most sincerely, and it's signed, Jasper Butler to the Brothers (laughs) McIntosh. Sounds like he thinks one of these guys is going to kill the other one, doesn't it? Sounds like he's crazy or punch drunk. Jasper Butler to the Brothers Mac... What's the matter, Brixie? George... Postmark on the letter is Harbor Town. Oh, that's important. Well, there's been something about Harbor Town lately. Something? Maybe this letter isn't crazy at all. I remember now. It's it's something Lieutenant Riley was talking about. listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. Now back to Let George Do It and George Valentine. Riley's out of town, Valentine, but I checked up for you. Thanks, Devlin. There's some kind of an investigation going on down there on the QT. Uh Small-time rackets of some kind. Nothing to do with us here in Homicide. A racket investigation. I thought that happened years ago in Harbor Town. It did. They blew the lid off the place about five years back. Sent a big shot named Fillory to the pit. Fillory, Fillory. Oh, sure, I remember. Well, how about the name McIntosh? That mean anything? Cafe owners. The biggest roadhouse owners in the state. At least Mervyn is. He's got a sour apple brother, I guess. Kind of got pushed out of the business. You know... That's what I don't understand. What do you mean, Devlin? Well, these McIntosh boys got their start at the same time Fillory went broke. Same time he was... Well, go on, go on. Hey, wake up. Hey, Devlin, come back to the party. I'm here, I'm here. I'm doodling on the morning traffic report. Huh? 3.30 3.30 a.m., Sugar Canyon Road, 1949 convertible, went over embankment. No explainable reason for accident. Single occupant. Uh, no, that's his brother. His what? Hey, what are you talking about? You got a letter said this guy McIntosh might be killed. Here, listen. Listen to this. Car rolled over five times, completely demolished. Single occupant, only here's what I mean. Bill McIntosh. And guess what, Valentine? He lived through it. Now, 
no, I don't want to see you. I don't want to see anyone. Get out of here. Lie still, will you please, Mr. McIntyre? That goes for you too, Doc. I don't need all them bandages. Emergency hospital already slapped well, enough look, on Mr. me. Mr. McIntosh, we, we don't mean to intrude. But your butler here, Jasper, tells me I can't see Mervyn unless I first see you. So you want to see Mervyn? Well, that was the original reason for coming here, but... We, we don't like to bother you when you've just been in an accident. I'm all right. I just got scratched up a little. Doc, you're all finished. You poked around enough. I'm going, I'm going. You too, Jasper. Go on, yes, go on. Sir, I'll show you to the door, Doc. Friend of my brother's. Sucker won't even send us a bill. Your brother seems to have lots of friends. Maybe. But you're not one of them. Maybe... I know all about you, Valentine. Jasper told me about that letter he wrote you. He's an idiot, an idiot. Yeah, well, he's worried about your brother. Follows him like a dog, the idiot. Anybody who ties strings around people or lets other people tie strings around them... Mr. McIntosh, maybe the doctor shouldn't have left. Nothing wrong with me. Driving alone, car flipped over. I was thrown clear. Scratches and bruises, that's all. I want to see you. I want to see anybody who hasn't been given a glad hand or a free cigar or a slap on the back. Jasper out there is worried. He hasn't caught on yet. You don't know what I'm talking about, eh? Well, Jasper... Jasper thinks my brother Mervyn is just sleeping late today. What are you talking about? Look, last night I answered the phone. And then Mervyn came home and went out. And then afterwards, I drove and I drove and I looked and I looked. I got more and more scared at what I'd done. Mervyn keeps a cabin cruiser down in the harbor, but she was anchored in the same old spot with no lights. I looked every place, from the railroad station to Sugar Canyon. Hey, wait a minute. Calm down, will you? Get back to that part. You got more scared at what you'd done. What had you done? Do you understand a man having enough to drink and being scared enough... When he sees a sharp turn coming, he just plain doesn't make the turn, just lets the car go over. Your accident. You mean you were trying to kill yourself? I mean, I've always hated my loud mouth brother. Oh, I was just excited, and I had some drinks, and I was scared, and I... Maybe I did. He is my brother. Abel and Cain, that's us. You better clear this up pretty fast, Buster. Know how to take dictation, miss. What? Oh, yes, I do. Oh, go ahead. A confession. Yes, a confession. The keeping quiet when I could have spoken and prevented my own brother's death. His death? Yes. My brother, the great Mervyn McIntosh. Friend to everybody. Well, he seems to have one enemy. A man named Fillory lost his shirt when we came to this town, and apparently it wasn't just because Mervyn had glad-handed him out of the nightclub business. Then Fillory went to prison. Why? Who knows? My brother Mervyn is honest, not a squealer. But for some reason, Fillory has threatened to kill Mervyn, not once, but 50 times. Fillory, uh, go on, go on. Well, Fillory was released from prison yesterday. Last night... uh, a wire came to the house from a friend telling us about it. And that's where I fit in. While I'm sitting here reading that wire, the phone rings and a little polite voice says he'd like to see Mervyn out in a lonely place. About some business, the voice says. And then it happens. Mervyn comes home. I give him the message, but I don't show him the telegram. He leaves. I don't tell him that that phony voice was really the voice of Fillory waiting to murder him. I don't know why I do it. A couple hours I just sit there and wait and sweat, but then I can't stand it any longer, so I go out looking, and I find the meeting's already taken place, and all I can find out is that Mervyn's green sedan has been seen leaving the place with Fillory in it alone. Don't you see? I let my brother walk into a trap. I let my own brother be murdered. Oyster Cove. And a green sedan parked right on the pier. What's your trouble, Bob? Huh? 
Oh, uh, nothing. I was just wandering around. How's the fishing? I don't know. I'm looking at boats. Yeah, yeah, sure. Some pretty ones are on. Say, uh, you didn't happen to see anybody getting in or out of that car over there, the green one? Yes, but as a matter of fact, I did. Me. Uh, you? Me. Is that all right? I was talking to a guy named Bill McIntosh a little earlier, and he That's said... That's so. Never happened to meet the man. Now, just slow down, Buster. You're fillery, aren't you? Is there a law against it? Whatever rotten branch of the law you spring from, but I assure you, my parole papers are quite in order. Not so fast. Let go of my arm. Let go of it, I said. Get away no. from those steps. Hey, right. here, what's going on? Fillery, stop that. Cut it out, both of you. Why, huh. you got a crew, huh? No, no, just Tony, a young fellow that helps me out. He's out there now, getting the boat warmed up. Who are you, chum? What's your name? <laughs> Oh, I think we can do without names on a hot day like this. I suppose you just run along, young man. Sure, and your feet. sure. You guys aren't interested in murder. In what? Murder? Well, if that's the case, perhaps I'd better. My name is Mervyn McIntosh. Oh, what do you mean, murder? All right. So you are Mervyn McIntosh, and you are alive. But how did Fillory get your car? Because I loaned it to him last night. I had to see about the boat. My crews are out there. He doesn't need to know that. Oh, now, take it easy, Fillory. He's not a reporter. He doesn't need to know any of it. Cool off, Buster. Fillory, please. I'll show you how I cool off. Hey, you... Oh. Well, look what you did. He was a nice young fellow. No need to I'm do I'm in a thing. hurry, McIntosh. I came to talk business. Remember? Relax, will you? We'd like to find someone to look after the boy. Leave him there. Business, I said. Oh, people should be friendly. We'll fix the boy comfortable. Now, pick up your suitcase and we'll go aboard. We're going to be friends, aren't we? Here, have a cigar. George, where on earth have you been? Oh, don't even ask me, Brucey. Where all good suckers go, I guess. But, darling, it's practically midnight, and the police have been... I don't care what's been happening. Besides an ice pack, all I care about is getting my hands on that Bill McIntosh. That crazy, hooked-up story of his about his brother being in danger, being dead. But, George, listen to me. The police have been calling. Bill McIntosh was right. What did you say? The Coast Guard up near Oyster Cove. They just fished out the body of Mervyn McIntosh. <laughs> listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. And now, back to George Valentine, the brothers McIntosh. One of them no one likes, and the other one called everybody in the world his friend. The only trouble is, big jovial Mervyn, whom you talked to only this afternoon, now is dead. Dead just as his brother Bill expected him to be. Dead just as their strange butler, Jasper, warned you Mervyn might be in the letter he wrote. Still, if your name is George Valentine, the case has not worked out in exactly the way you anticipated. In fact... As you return to examine the body with Lieutenant Devlin, you're convinced that nothing makes sense. Yeah, same guy I saw, all right. Struck over the side of the head, huh? Yeah. Coast Guard found him floating in the water of the bay. As I figured, Valentine Fillory got chipped out of his roadhouses and maybe his little rackets by the glad hander here. Yeah. Yeah, there might have been holes in this friendship stuff. Of course there are. Nobody was ever as popular as this bird's supposed to have been, or as nice to everybody. Fillory gets out of prison and kills Mervyn. Yeah, after the big boy manages to stall Fillory at their first meeting, and so suckers himself into being bumped off in an even more secluded spot. Mm -hmm. What about the boat? Well, it's just a drift out there someplace. All this fog and so many little bays along the coast, it'll take us a little time. Why a drift? What makes you think Fillory isn't still aboard it? Uh... 
You haven't looked back at the road at the end of the pier, have you? Why, what do you mean? What's the... Oh, no. Oh, yes. The green sedan isn't there. That's what happened to Fillory. He's got away again. Well, have they checked in Arizona, the used car lots? Valentine, and maybe... stop blaming yourself for this case. I man. got over that two days ago. I only asked it's you It's a these police things. case now. Even if we haven't done any better than you did. Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. Hello. Oh, George, about the steamer Guadalupe. The what? Go on, Angel. Foreign registry? As foreign as they come, three miles out, and you're as safe as a seal. It's a freighter, so no questions asked. When's she leaving? This afternoon, 4 o'clock, Pier 73. That's the other side of Harbor Town, so there's plenty of Will time somebody to... please you tell me? You finally persuaded me Fillory's the kingpin on this case. That's all, Devlin. What? If he'd really planned on killing Mervyn, then he's also smart enough to have planned how to get away, how never to be caught. Okay. Tell me the rest. Fillory had already booked passage a couple of days ago to sail on the Guadalupe this afternoon. Well, come on, come on. What are we waiting not for? Not so fast, Evelyn, not so fast. Get men down there just before 4 o'clock. But in the meantime, lay off. Stay away from the place. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. Angel, you and I have to go pay a social call on the poor guy that nobody likes. Town. Great. Bottleneck streets, bottleneck murder case. But they'll certainly be able to make Fillory talk no, when he won't. shows up at the boat. What'd you say? I said no, they won't. Brooksy, this is the right street, isn't it, for McIntosh's? Well, yeah, just up the block. Angel, but I... hey, look, look. Just parking in front of the house there. My nemesis, the wild goose but I George. chased. Well, let us park right behind her. Go ahead, that's it, Brooksy. Yeah, the green sedan, the special job. Uh, now, now, George, be careful. Never mind. You stay behind but me. But you'll see you first. I don't care, Lenham. It's a 50-50 chance, Angel. And from where I sit, that's good enough. Well, hello there. Oh, hello. You looking for me, mister? Maybe I am. You had the car, didn't you? Well... Yeah, sure, George, but I... what on earth is... The wild goose, Angel. I finally remembered something Mervyn said about a one-man crew. About a boy who was out warming up his boat. Well, that was you, wasn't it, Buster? You're Tony, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Tony. Look, I've always worked on that boat, only... Well, I, I didn't even know anything was wrong until I just read yesterday's newspaper, and, and Mr. Mervyn loaned me his car. You mean you stole it, Tony? Hello, Collins. Oh. No, no, I didn't. Honest, Mr. McIntosh, your brother said that this I could... This kid's been in trouble before, you know. Go on, kid, you tell it. Well, a couple of days ago, Mervyn came down to the boat at night. He'd had a meeting with some guy, giving him the car. And... Fillory? Well, I, I didn't know who it was then. Just somebody who didn't want to be seen coming through the public pier at the yacht club, I figured. Anyway, uh, Mervyn had slept on board that uh, night, and... Why didn't he call the house? The blasted, inconsiderate... Well, look, I, I didn't think he wanted anybody to know where he was. Well, what he was doing. Next morning, he told me to pull out, and we went up the coast to Oyster Cove, where it's quiet, to pick up the same guy. It was, Fillory. Yeah, yeah. They were going to go out fishing for a day or two, fishing and talking, I guess. Only they didn't want me along, so Mervyn, he said I, I could take the car for the weekend. Gee, he was like that, you know, always giving you everything. It's like I used to be in trouble, see, until he hired kid, me. Kid, and... kid, the police of ten states have been looking for that green car for two days. Where'd you take it that they couldn't find it? was it? in a garage, mister. My my girlfriend's garage. Gosh, it's the first weekend we've had off together in a year. Of course, I want to see Miss Brooks and the kid, Valentine, and we have plenty of time now that our little party at the freighter's been canceled. What are you talking about, Devlin? You remember that little black suitcase you saw Fillory carry? Yeah. Well, something must have backfired with the jailbird's plan because the Coast Guard had finally located that cruiser. Come on, make sense, will you? It was dynamite. The cruiser had blown up. That's what killed Mervyn when something hit him and knocked him overboard. And guess what else, Valentine? You got another body aboard the boat. Yeah. At first, I thought it might have been a deckhand. Only now you'll have to check the fingerprints we and find out... We already have. It's him, all right. It's Fillory. 
The guy whose plan to blow up Mervyn blew right up in his own face. So there you are, Valentine. The end. Bill, feller he's dead. <laughs> Big loss, that is. Of course, I never met the man. I wonder if your brother had him out on that boat trying to make a friend out of him. He'd have offered the devil himself a cigar. Doesn't pay, though. Sooner or later, you reach out to pat a dog and it bites your hand off. Yeah, I know, I know. You don't like anybody. I'm not apologizing. I was wondering if you really did try to commit suicide that night. What's that? Well, it would have been so easy to push your car over the cliff and give yourself a few scratches and bruises and pretend that you'd done it. Wait a minute, Valentine. Oh, no, you don't, Buster. And don't argue with a gun. Why, you... I wouldn't trust you any further than I could throw a piano. You're not going to shoot at me. You're not going to kill me in cold blood. Stand still. You are soft in the heart like Mervyn was. I told was. you to stand still. Hey, Jasper. Get up here, Jasper. See, I've got a gun, too. And now you have it. What's the matter? Hurt your arm? What do you think? I suppose when Jasper gets here, you'll the just... The house is empty, Valentine. You sent Miss Brooks and the kid away. And Jasper, he's a sentimentalist. He's changed his shirt by now and gone to my brother's funeral. All right, sour pussy. Now, you were saying something, weren't you? No, it's the things you say. Like just now, you said that you never met Fillory. I wouldn't have even noticed it if he hadn't told me exactly the same thing about you. Never met the man, he said, so maybe it's true. Well? Well, it doesn't quite fit with something you said in that ridiculous confession of yours. That you recognized the voice on the telephone the other night as being the voice of Fillory. Mm, you're a smart boy. So that guilty remorse of yours was all fake, wasn't it? <laughs> it's a pretty good guess. You bet it is, Buster, and I'll keep on guessing, too. You knew why Fillory got sent to prison... Maybe even planned it, sure. Sure, you were trying to duck out before Fillory and your happy-go-lucky brother ever got together to check notes. But they got together on that boat. Where you knew they'd be. Yeah, you're the one who made sure that boat would blow up the minute they were on board. And then you cooked up the cock-and-bull confession stuff. Just on the off chance the murder might be blamed on Fillory. Shut up! Why? You're planning to pull that trigger anyway, aren't you? Get rid of me and still try to get away with it. Try to get away Fillory had a getaway plan, remember? Well, who do you think really made that plan, using his name? And who do you think they're expecting aboard that freighter at four o'clock? And now there's no welcoming committee either. I want to know. Got every possibility covered, haven't you? Except maybe the clock. It's only ten after three. And Pier 73 is only just the other side of Harbor Town. I'll make it all right. Oh, you wrecked your car. In you your car, sucker. I haven't admitted anything, have I? I told you, I'm not crazy. There won't be any evidence. Well, you didn't pull the trigger on me, so I won't pull it on you. <laughs> you don't mean you're going to commit a friendly act. Valentine, I've never done anything in this world for anyone else. And I haven't asked anyone to do anything for me. My brother loved the whole town and vice versa. And where is he? And where am I? That's it. it shows how much friends can do for you. Get your thumb out of that horn, buddy. I'm sorry, officer, but... What's the matter with that man up there? He won't move. And I won't let him move. Can't you see there's a funeral going by? Keep your shirt but on. But I've got to get across town, you idiot. My boat sails at 4 o'clock. I'll miss the boat. I said cut it out. Take your hand off of that horn. Hey, Joe. Joe, what's the matter? Ah, uh, some kind of jerk, that's all. Can't stand to wait for a funeral go by. <laughs> Ever see such a crowd? We'll keep on all day. That Mervyn McIntosh was quite a guy. Back to the conclusion of our Let George Do It adventure in just a moment. (laughs) 
Well, how do you like that? Bill gets caught because he can't get by his brother's funeral. George, are you sure you're all right? The doctor said... I don't let the bandages scare you. Valentine, I don't want to say anything, but... Uh, but what? Well, a guy who lets himself get beat up, knocked down, dragged... Well, look, you got your man. You even got a screaming confession out of him. What difference does it make how he was caught? I'll take it easy. I didn't mean to. You want me to say I had him corralled. All I would have had to do was shoot. Why didn't I do it? Sure, I know. I'm some hero. Darling, now, please. Well, maybe it's the kind of guy I want to be, Devlin. Not a hero, just a sucker. Valentine, all I started out to remark was fearless Fosdick may stop a lot of people from eating beans, but me, well, me, I I wouldn't have shot either. Good for you, darling. Huh? Hey, what is this? She's kissing me. <laughs> You have just heard The Brothers Macintosh, another Let George Do It adventure. Robert Bailey was starred as George Valentine with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. David Victor and Jackson Gillis wrote the story with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Now this is yours truly inviting you to another Visit with Valentine when you will again hear what happens when you Let George Do It.